Hey YouTube, today what I'd like to show to you is how to repressurize uh, one of these uh, uh, tanks. This is a Megaflow uh, and it's uh, been in my house for 16 years and you need to periodically put uh, air back into the uh, bubble itself. So there's a, an air bubble in this tank and at some point the uh, pressure of the air dissipates into uh, the water and uh, you just need to periodically repressurize it. And uh, uh, there have been some comments in, uh, in one of my videos uh, where I replaced uh, one of the balanced, uh, the three bar um, water balance valve which is inside the system, which was back here. Uh, and what I want to do now is show you the actual process by which you can repressurize the tank. Uh, this is described on the side of the tank here. Uh, it says if water drips uh, intermittently uh, from uh, the uh, uh, the, the device and in this this you will see sometimes water dripping out through the the tundish here uh, and that runs out to the outside of the house um, with the balance valve here um, there's a pressure release valve as well uh, which also runs to the outside of the house and water can also drip through that um, there's another pressure release valve as well in the expansion tank which is the red tank above here uh, and, uh, and those are the areas where uh, you, you need to sort of uh, check just to see if there's, there's problems with it. Um, I know generally that we need to repressurize this tank every six months. Um, uh, that's probably because of its age. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the process of, uh, of actually repressurizing uh, the tank itself. So uh, what I will do is I will um, uh, uh, go through the process, uh, open up the, well, first of all, I close off the hot and uh, the water feeds to the tank. So here I'm taking the main feed, so this is the main cold feed into the tank. This then goes through the, uh, the balance valve and then underneath here there is also another uh, lever which I can shut off and that isolates the pipe work which runs into this, runs into some of the rest of the house as well uh, and that's the cold water feed into the tank itself. Uh, the next stage that I need to do is go downstairs and open up the, uh, the hot tap uh, in the uh, sink downstairs. That's one of the lowest places uh, and from there I can, uh, I can then uh, go to the next stage which is then open up this valve and you'll see how I hold it open and you'll, you'll get to hear uh, the sort of the sound that the, uh, the device itself makes. Um, I'll also take a photograph of the particular directions that are on this tank as well. Uh, but you will uh, be able to also see in the link uh, that I'll provide uh, the, uh, the specific uh, statement that is made by um, the manufacturer of this particular tank. Um, if this is a useful video, uh, please subscribe to my channel. It's always very helpful, um, builds up the, uh, the, the profile inside YouTube. Uh, and again, if, if it's a, been a helpful uh, activity, please, uh, please like as well. So just to recap, uh, mains water feed has been switched off through the control valve here and the control valve at the bottom. If you're unhappy uh, to use that, then please use the main stop cock in the house. Uh, that will cut off all the cold water supply to the rest of the house. So it's very important you actually uh, isolate the cold water feed, mains pressure feed into the tank itself. So what we need to do is open up the, uh, the, the tun dish. Uh, valve. Uh, well, this is the Tundish. This is a, a pressure release valve. It's a safety valve. Uh, it's designed to uh, release uh, water from the tank if the tank ever exceeds any particular settings. Uh, in this case, it's a pressure setting and also a temperature setting. I think this is set at 10 bar uh, and a temperature of around about 90 to 95 degrees. Uh, your hot water tank is typically around about 60 degrees. That's what most central heating systems are set at. Some go to 65, but typically 60. So clearly it's a safety mechanism. Uh, these things are very dangerous. You need to be uh, an authorized uh, plumber to handle these systems. Hence why I didn't change this part myself. I got a, 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 a heating plumber, uh, heating certified plumber, who's able to work with a system like this. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and you have to be very careful. So the way that um, I uh, re-put uh, the air back into the, the tank itself, as per the instructions on the side here, um, I open up the valve <coughs> and I use some mole grip clamps here 
which I'll uh, clap onto it. Uh, and then I use just a, a general clamp to hold it in place because this can take tens of minutes, um, typically 45 minutes for a tank this size. If you have a smaller tank, it may take a little bit less. So uh, let, me, uh, let me show you how I, uh, how I set this up. So first of all, if we open it up, you can hear the gurgling noise and downstairs more water will be running outside the tank. You have a little bit of a discharge. Let me release that back. And what I now do is I just basically clamp around this, make it a little bit tighter. So you don't want to crush the plastic. You can see it's now held. And I just use this clamp in place here. And this then holds it open. So if I take my microphone and move it a little bit closer, you will hear bubbling of the tank. <coughs> so effectively what's happening, what's happening here is air is going back into the tank. There's a chamber inside here, is my interpretation of what's going on. And this chamber is then slowly filling up with air um, and repressurizing the tank itself. So, say this can take several minutes. Uh, I'm not going to let you watch this for several minutes, uh, but you can you can see essentially the uh, the effect of it. And downstairs, as I mentioned, uh, there'll be hot water now running from uh, the uh, the hot water tap as the air is displacing uh, effectively the space um, where the hot water would be resistant uh, would be in the tank itself. Okay, the process uh, appears to have finished. We've uh, had this running now for a good couple of minutes. Uh, there's no more noise coming out of the, uh, the, the Tundish valve here uh, and no dripping of water. And sometimes you can test it by sticking your finger under here. Uh, the hot tap's still open downstairs. So if I release this now, there's no inward rush of air. So that means that the balance between the tank and the outside atmosphere is the same, uh, which would imply that the, the tank has now reached uh, the point where it feels that it's filled, it's filled itself up with the air correctly. Uh, so now what I need to do is just release these two. So let me release this one to start off with. There's the first one. The valve now returns back to its naturally closed position. Uh, and what I'll do is um, I will turn off the, uh, uh, the hot water tap downstairs uh, and then I'll come back and then I'll start recording again and you'll hear the water in rush into the system as well. Uh, and then I'll open up the hot water tank so you need to then get the air out of the system because if you've got any taps in and around the house um, then they will have drained down as well. Okay, so let me open up the, the lower valve first. So that was the that feeds into the hot water tank at the bottom. That would isolate effectively the uh, the balance valve here. And uh, what you'll hear now, as soon as I open this up, is uh, water pressure should rush into the tank. So here you can hear water entering back into the tank. That's now replacing effectively the water that's come out of the hot water tap that was running downstairs and then this tank will come to pressure and what I'll then need to do is I'll need to um, go around the house and open up uh, the hot taps because what will have happened is that uh, the hot water tap because it was the lowest one downstairs in the kitchen water would also have rushed out from um, those particular taps around the house you can hear we're getting to the point where the tank is probably getting full to pressure. Yep, and now it's settled down. So yeah, as mentioned, need to go around, open up the other hot taps in the house, um, and you'll just get the, the, the coughing and bubbling from the tap, uh, which is uh, can be quite annoying if it's the first time you switched on the tap and if no one else in the house realizes that uh, this process has been taken over and then you, you basically get 
splattered with hot water or water onto uh, onto the basin and then it just bounces off onto your lap. So definitely go around and release the pressure in the tank. I hope this process was of use uh, to anyone who has a Megaflow uh, and is looking to recharge the Megaflow. Uh, the uh, uh, recommendation uh, in the maintenance manual, I believe, is once a year. But as I say, this tank is over 16 years old uh, and we have to repressurize it um, probably a couple of times per year. Um, this is the second time I've done it this year, so um, you know it uh, really depends on on how it's performing. But um, hopefully that uh, that helps other people out who were looking to uh, understand how to repressurize your megaflow. So I'm now just quickly on the outside of the house, um, the valve on the outside of the house here, this is where the tun dish uh, and all the pressure release valves will uh, deposit their water uh, if there's a problem. And uh, as you saw, there was some water dripping out of the tun dish. Uh, so this is where it runs out and terminates. So down here is the uh, remnants of the water that was dripping out. Uh, this also gives me a clue if there's a problem and I need to repressurize. So if you have um, an outside valve, with uh, your closed vented uh, heating system and you see dripping water then uh, the chances are that uh, and you have a, a mega flow then you just need to repressurize it and sort out the issue but um, that just shows you the, the small amount of water that came out as a result of repressurization.